Hey y'all, happy Thursday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And we work on projects from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way, ask your questions, and just come and chit chat. Uh, so I hope you hit the like button below if you're on Facebook and the subscribe button on, uh, on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. That's where all my videos will go when we're done here. Uh, tonight, we're continuing on the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. We are going to finish in theory, <laughs> the comfort food block. And here we are so far. Let me show you it. Here we are, the comfort food block. How adorable is that? We are working on that tiny little a strawberry on the top. So I did a white background for mine because in my quilt, that was one of the rules I set for myself that whenever I have a background, I'm going to try and do it white. It's a a cute thing that I've seen other places before, but I've never done a quilt like that myself. So I got my little white background, my cute little cone. Uh, we have our strawberry started from last night. It's needle turn applique. And we have our itty bitty bitty tiny piece that we'll be putting on for the top. And then there is a little bit of embroidery as well. So I'm hoping we can get through all that tonight. Uh, should be easy peasy. We'll see how it goes. All right, I'm going to flip you around. Let's get started. Thanks again, everyone, for joining. All right, let's see how well we can do this tonight. So there, these pieces are so itty bitty. I mean, like, look, I even uh, clipped it together here just so it wouldn't, um, so I wouldn't lose it. So I have a, a clip on it just just, uh, you know, to have some bulk there. But this little piece gets put on right there. We already drew the line on this from last night. Uh, what I want to do now is I saved the little paper piece. I want to trace that on as well because you want to have it on the front of your piece and also drawn on your background fabric because you're going to try and match up the two lines as you stitch. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to just kind of place this. Oh my God, it's cute. Uh, you can kind of see there's a dotted line there. That's the, these big lines are going to be our embroidery stitches, but this little dotted line, that is where it should overlap our other piece here. So this top of the strawberry. So just like that, I'm going to hold that there and just get my water soluble marker out here. This doesn't have to be perfect, but it is nice having that guide on the back of your fabric. All right, so now I'm gonna get it on the strawberry bit here. I think that's going on. There we go, cute! All right, that should be enough uh, to work with. You know what, I'm gonna actually keep this tiny paper. It always blew away on me already, but I think I'm gonna keep it just so I can reference the stitch line. I mean, you know, I suppose I have this in the book yet. Yeah, you know what, I have this in the book. I can't hold on to that tiny piece anymore. No way. So here, I'll just go by the actual guide in the book. And I just, I didn't realize that there was a little top on there either. So can't forget that. Okay. Let's take a look at this. So I have, whoop, I have in my applique pins here. We're gonna need one of those. It's just these, these clover applique pins. They're just itty bitty pins. So you don't have a long uh, shaft of the pin to you know, accidentally get all the thread wrapped around. Um, I may actually trim this piece a little bit more and we'll trim it as we get to it. So, all right, I'm going to, let's just start, let's give it a go. So I'm gonna start stitching. Oh, it does look like a little butterfly half, doesn't it? Oh, cute. I totally see that, Bonnie. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start on this top edge here. 
probably gonna start like right about there. And that's because it's just a nice slow arching uh, shape here. If I start with all this detail at the bottom, that's gonna be pretty difficult. So the straighter edge you can start on, the better. So what I'm gonna do now first is try and match up these front lines or the, the lines on my, uh, my, my piece here to the background lines that we just did. So I'm just gonna try and just lift it up and peek and get it placed as best I can. We're gonna be dealing with some bulk here. All right. And since I'm starting down on this side, I'm gonna put a pin right here. There, we're, we're in. Okay, and that'll be enough to hold this. Normally I like having more than one pin just so it's not pivoting on that point, but we're gonna start some stitches right away and that will act as like the other, other point. So, okay, we need our needle. I am using a size 11 straw or Milner's needle. A size 11 is just super skinny and that helps, uh, it's easier to go through the fabric when you have a skinny needle like this. It does tend to bend a l after a little while, but I actually find that it doesn't bend so much with needle turn applique. It actually bends a lot for me if I'm doing like English paper piecing or something. So it, it'll bend, but you know, whatever. For it being a little skinnier, I can get a couple of them, right? <laughs> they come in a pack. And it has just a really small eye, so you're not gonna wanna use embroidery floss or anything. It's meant for just some real little thread. I'm using 50 weight. Uh, just because that's what I have. Um, I know a lot of people use 80 weight, which is even skinnier, which will make even more delicate little stitches. And that's kind of what you want for, for needle turn. So I don't want to get a huge piece of thread because I don't want it to tangle. Uh, I only have like maybe, maybe not even 12 inches here. And it, I only need to go around this tiny itty bitty space. So I don't actually need very much. So let's thread this guy. All right, and I'm gonna just, I'm horrible at doing like these knots at the end. I know there's like a special trick, but I never, I never could get that right. So I'm gonna just go like that, get a knot, a good old knot at the bottom. Oh, tiny it is, it is so tiny. <laughs> I think this, actually now that I think of it, well, I was gonna say, I think this might be the smallest uh, needle turn applique that we did, but if I remember right, I think there was like a bird beak or two in the first Splendid Sampler that was just like the tiniest little triangle. So uh, maybe uh, it's almost the smallest piece. All right, and you know what? I might just shave off a little bit more fabric here. I don't wanna do too much because if it starts fraying, I'm not gonna have anything to tuck under, but. This is just maybe a tiny, tiny hair too much, especially down here. So I'm gonna just shave it off a little bit and I might just keep shaving it off as I go. Um, I suppose we, let's use my little scissors here. Just makes me nervous. It's, it's kind, of a, kind of bulky. So I'm literally shaving like a 16th of an inch off. Oh yeah, the I Love Home quilt blocks, that's right. We um, we did a lot of needle turn applique on that, that's right. Gosh, that whole quilt for me was all about needle turn applique. Uh, we did the Jacqueline Steves I Love Home quilt along and that had uh, four blocks that had these cute little house patterns on and uh, you could applique it or you could embroider it. I decided to do both. Um, cause I wanted to try, I, there's always an experiment for me or some, something to learn on each project. That project for me was, uh, putting embroidery with needle turn applique and just exploring the look of that. So we did a lot of, I wanted to improve on my needle turn applique. So we, we ended up doing a lot of needle turn applique for that. And you're right. That's what I have in my head. I'm like, just tiny little stitches. It was, it was all those itty bitty leaves on different flowers. That's what that's what it was, the I Love Home quilt. All right, I'm just starting off by folding an edge 
under, and you can see I'm lining up the top, uh, the top line here with my line underneath. And I'm gonna just come up from the bottom and just grab that first little fold. Ooh, gosh, and I, we are dealing with seam allowances here. I got like six layers of fabric here almost. So that's gonna make this more difficult. So that's kind of a bummer, but we'll get it. You really only need to grab the top layer, but sometimes it, you grab more than one. I'm just going around that spot one more time. There we go. All right, you can see I, I trimmed this and it already is wanting to fray on me, so I, I need to tuck that under, get that stitched down quick. So I'm just using my needle to kind of push that seam underneath using the lines as my guide. That actually went pretty well. So I'm going in the same spot, but in the back of the fabric and then coming up like a stitch length away where it feels like it needs to be tacked down next uh, up through the fold of the fabric and the back of the fabric. All right, and I think I'm lucky enough I can get another one out of this fold. Usually I have to, especially with something this small, I have to fold it over with every, every single time I don't get lucky that I get to do two stitches. All right, keeping on. All I'm doing is matching up my blue lines here, putting a little, uh, little tuck under and, and tacking it down. We're tacking down folds. All right, at this point, I don't think I need my pin anymore. It's just gonna get in the way at, at this point. And you know what? I, I think I might trim again. Uh, so let's just get this out. I'm just gonna clip away a little bit more. Maybe I should have done this before getting it on, but oh well. Get around this curve a little bit. The hardest part is gonna be when we get to these little inner bumps. I may need to trim in to the point. Um, maybe I can force it. I don't know. We're going to we're going to just see what happens when we get there. Since they're not they're not like true inner points, it's kind of like a little curve. So, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. But that's what's makes making me nervous, these little inner points here. Oh, you didn't see the I love home. Oh, you must have been in La La Land, Jennifer. Yeah, you know what? It's so crazy. That was a, a you know, it feels like we just did that project, but it was kind of a while ago already, wasn't it? I, I'm not done with the I Love Home quilt. Um, I'm working on the back of the quilt yet. I'm trying to just use up all my fabric from the quilt in the back, so kind of like improv piecing it together. And I've been saving that quilt for when I know how to free motion a quilt. Uh, so we did that project. So so since then, I since that project, I have learned at least enough to free motion quilt it. So, uh, you know, the project is ready to come up again. You know, sometimes it's just, sometimes a project just isn't ready to be worked on. And, and you know, it might be that time again now that, now that I know how to free motion quilt, because that's kind of what I was waiting for. I still need to finish a back. Oop, popped out there. Still need to finish a back for the quilt. And then, you know, we need to baste it all together and all that sort of stuff. But I feel like I'm at, at an educational point that I can actually work on it. Oh my God, it started, Bonnie, Bonnie looked it up. It started two years ago in August. <sighs> what? That's crazy. But I bet you that's totally right. Oh my God, two years ago. I mean, you know, I suppose we've done a lot since then. We did the that charming chevrons quilt. We did that little hourglass quilt. The charming chevrons was the one to learn how to learn how to do the foundation or the uh, free motion quilting. 
We did something else in the meantime for practice on that too, didn't we? Oh, maybe that's this quilt. <laughs> you know, a whole pile of uh, Splendid Sampler 2. I mean, we have been working on this for a while as well. Oh yeah, last year she did that Save the Bees one. Yeah, you're right, I did not do that quilt along. <laughs> well, not to mention, you know, we are working on the Triangle Tango quilt, so that took some time. Crazy, you guys. It is crazy, crazy that that project was that long ago. Oh my gosh, I can't. My thumb can't hold that down. Let's try one more time. And then my thumb's in the way. <laughs> this would be hard with longer thumbnails than I, than I have. I'm just going to force it. I'm going to tack this guy down and I keep stabbing my finger <laughs> on the back. All right, got it. Rotate a little here. All right, well, we got the top part. Look, it looks like a little hat now. <laughs> It'd be cute to just leave it like this. Oh gosh, yeah, you're right. We did, uh, oh, we did the dishcloth and the punch needle. Oh my gosh, you guys, you are right. We must have done some embroidery in there too. Gosh, that thread punching, yeah. That was fun. That'd be fun to do again. And if we haven't done any embroidery, we gotta get on that again. That's, that would be way too long to not have done some of that. But man, that could be these projects just kind of, time just kind of goes by, doesn't it? All right, I'm on that first kind of little tight curve. I'm gonna probably put a few more stitches in, in this curve to tack it down. I'm really working this thumb to hold everything there. Ooh, we're also approaching, or we're there right now, Oh, that's what we did. We did the coloring and embroidery. That's that's what it was, Glennis. We did do that. Phew. All right. That would have been scary. Oh, and the stuffed unicorn. Was that before or after? I think some of those might have been before the I Love Home quilt. Huh. I'm not sure. Well, and then there's all our half square triangles, too, from... Um, you know, my leaders that I've been doing. All right, I'm contemplating this part of it now. I think I may want to put some slits in here, just right, kind of not all the way to the blue line, but close here and here where it becomes like a concave arc um, because some of the fabric's going to need to fold this way under and some's going to need to fold that way under and it can't do that if it's still you know attached as one piece of fabric here so i think um i think i'm going to put a cut here and i think i'm going to do it here right away as well and i think that will allow us to flip our edges under it'll be a little tricky right at the point we might get a few little frayed bits but luckily that is also where our embroidery stitches are going to go through. They're going to kind of cut through these. So that should cover up any little frayed bits that we get. Oh yeah, we did the Krista Watson's um, Charming Chevron's quilt. I should have links to all that too. So if you guys go to any of those projects and just click on one of the videos, there should be links. All right, I'm going to cut in this. This scares me, but I'm doing it. Oh yeah, the English paper piecing with uh, Blair Stocker. All right, I'm clipping. Ah, we'll do it here too. I'm not going all the way. There are a few threads before, but I may actually need to clip in a little bit more when I get there. Yep, wise. The pillow was Wisecraft quilts, which is which is Blair um, Stocker. Um, Krista Watson was the charming chevrons quilt. Oh, Leslie, you started watching in the middle of um, the Splendid Sampler one, so you are old school for sure. All right, so we're just 
I'm just tucking this under. I think I'm gonna start tucking from where I cut. This is a lot of bulk to fit underneath this little tiny bit, but ooh, I think we're doing it. I think we're doing it. I need to curve it out a little bit. I'm gonna put as many stitches in here as I can just because it's such a tight curve. I wanna get one where it's kind of pointing out here because if I put a stitch there, it'll kind of hold it in a little bit. All right, let's get another one in here. Ooh, going through a lot of fabric there. All right, looking good. We got that first bitty curve in. Oh my gosh, Leslie, that's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. All right, let's see. So on a point, again, this isn't quite a point, but when I do a point, there is a trick, or like an inner point, there is a trick where you fold this cut piece like way more under than it needs to be, and that helps finish up this side, and I think we may need to do that. So I'm gonna get my fingers in here, but look, look how small this is. You know what, I don't think my fingers are gonna work. I'm gonna use the needle. And I'm gonna flip this edge like way, oh gosh. You don't wanna handle it a lot either cause it's gonna start fraying, but I'm gonna pop it way back farther than it needs to. Actually, I didn't get that far back, but I got my thumb there now, I'm gonna keep it there. I'm gonna try and just swoop the needle under here and that should get rid of some of those frays. It should just tuck those frays under. You can tell I'm not quite on my front line anymore, but you know, that was just a guide. I'm going with what I can go with here. I'm just trying to get this tacked down. If I can follow the blue line on my top piece well enough, that, that'll be plenty, plenty good. All right, I'm kind of at that middle point now. I'm gonna put two little tacks there. That will kind of hold in the phrase a little bit. Ooh, I just stabbed through my skin. That's what you would normally do at a point, and you know at this, I'm just, at this juncture, I'm declaring this an inner point here. All right. I think that worked. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, we're kind of ready for this next bit. Gosh, it almost feels like it's shrinking these, these little bits. Oh, it's cute though. Cute, cute, cute. Whew, let's see if we can do this next one. I think I actually need to snip in here a little bit more, which is crazy because it's we're so close already. There we go. And I, I'm also gonna just kinda shush away some of the bulk here too again. Just a little. Again, not too much because it's all just gonna fray on me. It's a little balance. I'm in the balance of fraying and not fraying. Gosh, I almost need to just tuck this way under. All right, since this is on the line, I'm gonna tack it when I can before it moves on me. Oh, you, I should bring that cone back out. So what they're, what Gretchen's referring to, if you guys don't know, I, when we, oh, that was for the I Love Home Quilt. I, for Penguin and Fish, I order, oh, I need to get in here more. I order, my floss in bulk typically, and it comes on a huge cone. And I just love it. So for the I Love Home quilt, I stitched all the embroidery with one color and it was this kind of coral pink. I call it a coral pink. Um, and I just had it sitting around and that's what I took my, my thread off of, my floss off of was this cone. So that came, that became our mascot for, for that project. I should just always have that behind me. Whenever we need some coral floss, it'll be there. All right, I'm trying to get this next point, but it's being a little ornery. There we go. I just needed to tuck those little frayed bits under and now I can Tack, tack this down. This really is a small piece, you guys. If you managed um, 
to get this all needle turn. Congrats, for sure. Okay, that was the hard part. We made it around those two little bumps. I think they will kind of look like bumps. We'll take a look at it. Um, you know, Leslie, I save all those empty cones and I got a whole pile of them. I don't know what to do with them yet, but I can't toss them. So I have like little towers of these cones. So if you have a good idea, let me, let me know. I know my grandma used to have these dolls that were attached to the cone, like the dress would be attached to the top of the cone. So, you, and then it was on a dowel, so you could pull the doll into the cone and then make it pop out of the cone. I always thought that was neat, and but I have so many that I, I can't make like a, a ton of those and they're kind of goofy and weird. Oh, maybe you'll just embroider the strawberry. I think embroidering the strawberry would be darling as well. It is, you know, I'm considering this practice at this point. I am, I, this is one of those skills that I think you'll always be practicing or, or I feel like I need practice on it. It's, you know, you can get into a groove, but it's definitely not a total natural thing. I feel like it's something to keep getting better at. All right, this last little loop is kind of, too bloopy. I'm gonna poof it out a little bit. So I'm just pulling on the the seam to try and make it bubble out a little bit. Again, teeny stitches. Ugh. Oh man, I totally think we've got it though. Alright, I'm back to the beginning. So this is gonna be my last stitch. And then I'm gonna go around this stitch again. Ugh, I'm really happy with it. I think I think that went went well here. All right, this ugh, this is kind of locking it down. Ah, cute. And then I'm going to just get the needle in the back again and, and tie a knot. Come on. There we go. I could have used a little bit more thread cuz it kept wanting to get uh undone. So, maybe my thread was a tish short few more inches would have been better. But I didn't want it to tangle all up either, so I think we did just fine. Okay, whew, I can breathe again now. Ooh, a little red button would be cute. When you put the black floss on, it'll look better. All right, so cute, there we are, you guys. So, uh, um, you know, we got a little fuzzle there. Let's see if I can tuck that under, just if we're being super picky. Get under there, fuzzle. The embroidery stitches are gonna go there, but I thought maybe I could tuck it under that fold yet, and I think we got it. All right, so uh, there we are. You know, it's kind of hard to see with the, you know, I got some ink on there. Uh, when the, this all comes off, I think it'll look cuter. But, you know, that bloop in the middle is kind of a little flat, but we we did it. <laughs> it's on there. I'm pretty happy with that. And look, it, it just poofs off the poofs off the fabric. That's what the fun part of Needle Turn. It's just so 3D, um, so tactile. So, all right, let's, um, let's do the embroidery part. I'm going to scooch up here. <laughs> it is just so silly cute. I think I might want to do this embroidery in like kind of a greeny, like a yellow green color. I know that I have, I typically have some floss that looks like that. Actually kind of like this, this floss here to kind of go with my yellows, but still have a little bit of green in is what I'm thinking. Oh good, I do have some of that. Oh no, that's yellow. Let's see what else. This is kind of my, this is my scrap thread bin. You know, that's not really a scrap, but I thought I had a lighter one. Here, I think this is a little paler. Yeah, I want to go more of this light one because I think it blends in with my yellows a little bit more. All right, good. That's what I want. Let's check the instructions to just see. Um, okay, two strands. That's what I wanted to know. Two strands of 
of floss and straight stitches. So I think we just do one big stitch at these points. So let's take a look at the um, where they should be. Let me get you guys back down in here. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of draw those in. I'm not gonna trace, I, you know, I'm just gonna use that as a guide. I probably don't actually even need to draw it on, but I think I will anyway. So let's see, right in the middle, it looks like there's a little point like that. And then we got four different stitches, which is actually quite a bit for this little space. So one crosses over this area. One goes up like here into our little nook. Then another one. And then another one. So kind of like, like that. Although I think they're probably meant to all go up to here. If I had to guess. Um, so I think, I think let's do this stitch and then have them all like telescope from, from there, you know, and I'm marking this up all crazy, but you know, we'll, we'll take care of that. I'm probably not going to take any of the blue off now, but we'll, we'll do it some other time. All right. I don't need much for this. I don't think let's just do this and then I'll get... Gosh, I got about maybe eight inches here. Hopefully that's enough, should be. All right, I'm gonna get the two strands. So separate them one at a time. There's the first. And isolating the threads one at a time. There we go. And this guy can go back in my scrap bin. Oh, I'm gonna have to grab an embroidery needle. Let's 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 get Zeb out here again, because we gotta put this needle away. All right, here is Zeb. I I freak out every time I pick him up. I feel like I'm gonna just accidentally drop him on the floor. But all right, Zeb, you can take your needle. And uh, here's an embroidery needle for us. Embroidery needle has that big eye and a sharp point, so we can get get the thread through. So I'm matching up this thread again. All right, and I think I'm gonna just tie a knot on the one then. Usually I don't like doing knots in embroidery. I have different tactics for that, but in this case, we're just gonna do a little knot. Okay. I'm gonna start. This point here, actually, I think I might go up. Well, yeah. All right, that's, <laughs> I'm already kind of off. But all right, I think I'm gonna go down to where the line starts. So there we go, kind of on that side strawberry. And I'm gonna go right up. Oop, whoops, forgot. I don't have a hoop, so this isn't stretched out. So don't pull too hard because you'll pull it all the way in. So I'm gonna just let that out again. Use my fingers as a hoop, kind of hold it like this. And I'm gonna go straight up to my point again, where that, oh, I think I'm pulling, see, I'm pulling, I'm pulling the knot through. I think we're gonna have to do this again, yeah. I need a bigger knot. Actually, I'm gonna tie the knot on the back. I'm gonna just kind of go right here. Maybe this is a weird thing to do. I'm not sure I've ever done this with embroidery. I'm just gonna tie myself a knot here so the knot's out of my way. It's not gonna pull through and it's not gonna pull through here because it's attached to fabric. All right, let's try that. Start over. There we go. Much better. Now I'm gonna get back down here. We're gonna go right up to that point of the stem. There we go, cute. All right, and now I'm gonna go in that 
bump out area, like right in the nook. I'm trying to get it, I'm trying to find that spot. There, I think that's good. Probably would have been smarter for me to go down in that spot, but now I'm kind of committed to going through this point. Because it'd be better to push the nubbins or the like little frayed edges down at those spots versus pulling them up like I'm pushing them upward here, but we're, we're in it now. All right, one more. Oh, I think this green was just the right color. And you know what? I think I might add a couple little stitch marks for seeds. We had talked about that. A couple French knots. Should we do a couple French? Ugh, I don't think I have enough thread for French knots, but we could just do a couple little... Um, <laughs> cute. A couple just little single stitches. Kind of how it is in the pattern. I think the, I think this, you know, it kind of looks like that, but I think this is actually just the fabric has that pattern on, but I like those little tiny marks on there. So since we have a little bit of thread left here, why not we add a, a couple little mini stitch points? Oh God, cute. Yep, that was a good idea. Do a couple little stitch points to make it look like little seeds. Oh, we could have done a little smiley face, but we'll we'll keep it to the little stitch marks. I'm just kind of you could draw these on. I'm just kind of doing it. We'll get one more in there. Cute. We're going through a lot of fabric here. This is all the bulk. Oh my gosh, I can't even hold it. I gotta hold it this way. This is all the bulk of the strawberry. Um, in here. <laughs> it, it will only go up at that point, so I guess we're going at that point. Oh, that fabric tucked under here. Oh my gosh, I can't even get it back in. There we go. Alright, let's get one more up in the corner here. Odd numbers always kind of look better sometimes. There we are. Just enough thread for that. Okay, that was a cute addition there. I think that made the strawberry. <laughs> so sweet. All right, let's uh, weave in the ends. I could probably just tie a knot, but let's let's weave them in. Actually, I am gonna tie a knot. We'll go around this spot here. Again, I suppose. All right. Snip that off, and I think we are done. I mean, you know, I can still take off that blue marking pen, but I think uh, we'll just leave it there for the night. But. Ugh. Look at him, he is cute. All right, I'm pretty dang happy with that uh, needle turn applique job too. Definitely all the practice from the I Love Home quilt and the Splendid Sampler one uh, allowed me to get that far because my needle turn applique definitely did not always look, look, um, look like this. That one big stitch is gonna wanna just move, but <laughs> it's okay. So, all right, you guys, that is that. It is the comfort food block. And uh, that's all we're gonna do tonight. Uh, I do have a plan for tomorrow though, and I'll, I'll flip you guys around and we can chat about that for a sec here. Hello. Gosh, I almost wanna do this whole block with needle turn applique. Wouldn't it be cute to have a whole ice cream cone needle turn? Cause that, that strawberry, that is darling. But holy cow, that took like a couple hours for something this big, like what the heck? You know what I mean? 
<laughs> that's that's just crazy. Uh, can you imagine doing a whole quilt? Like I showed you uh, when we worked on that first Splendid Sampler and the I Love Home Quilt, that Story Quilts book. Oh, I love that book so much. Oh, I should bring that out again, but it's whole quilts of whole scenes with tiny little needle turn pieces that big. Like, that would take years and years. Oh well, I just thought it was uh, a fun thing to play around with though with the I Love Home Quilt. I, I think it turned out just so sweet. Ugh, love it. But all right, you guys, uh, tomorrow I was thinking, uh, since it'll be Friday, instead of starting a new block, I thought we'd have a little cleaning and repair session here. So I know I've been talking about oiling and uh, um, just cleaning my machine for a while for lots of blocks and lots of projects. So I thought we could open that up, take a look at everything, oil it all, clean it all out. We have the iron that has been getting dirty and we talked about a few ways to clean an iron. I've never done that before. So I thought we could try a few of those. And you know, my, my, uh, that triangle ruler that I got, I never <laughs> returned that to Amazon and now it's past the time that I can return it. But I, so it broke in the mail, this triangle, uh, that, what is it called again? The, oh, the slotted trimmers, that triangle slotted trimmers for half square triangles, uh, that one piece of it broke in the mail. So I haven't been able to use it, but I, I did do some research on how to, fix an acrylic ruler and I got the tools to do that and I think we might give that a try trying to fix to like glue back together basically um with an interesting material uh this acrylic ruler I'm a little scared about that but if it works it would be a game changer <laughs> so I think that's what we'll do tomorrow like a clean and repair session and then we'll be all good to go for next week. It's, it's time, you know, clean up my table, clean it all up. It's feeling, I'm feeling the need. <laughs> good Friday thing to do. So that's uh, the plan for tomorrow. Uh, that'll be at 8.30 p.m. Central Time here on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page. And again, that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, so if that helps at all, <laughs> knowing those other times. Uh, and then I will get this video up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. So if you guys have any suggestions, especially for this, this uh, iron cleaning, I know we've talked about it before, but throw your ideas up in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group and we'll take a look at some of those tomorrow. All right, have a great evening. Good night.